Ferrari crumbled under the full pressure of a title battle this season. They were able to create a championship-worthy car, but reliability issues, wrong strategy choices, and a mix of driver errors resulted in Ferrari backing out of the title race a little over halfway through the season. But they have hopes to return to the top step of the championship in the next season. Will they be able to win it all again? Let's dive into Ferrari's upgrades for the 2023 season. The core for the F175 is at a baseline level and has not been upgraded this year. The evolution of the Ferrari F175 has resulted in more energy being generated on the front Pirelli tires, but contrary to popular belief, the F175 cannot afford to soften the mechanical setup due to the constraints imposed by these suspensions in order to satisfy the needs of tires that must remain in the correct operating window to ensure the best behavior and must not be stressed with sliding and loss of traction which generate harmful overheating. Some have speculated that this negative effect is a result of the FIA's introduction of technical directive TD39. But if the car is raised from the ground to reduce porpoising, the aerodynamic load decreases, so Ferrari would need to be able to manage the stiffness of bars and shock absorbers if it weren't for the fact that ground effect need to be as hard as irons, and Pirelli tires do not like the stress that would result. The Maranello engineers were unable to find a solution even by acting inside the front corner, expelling the hot air generated by the disc without it being radiated through the rim to the tires, so the performance of the F175 was less stable than that of the RB18, though the car was still impressive on a flying lap, with 12 pole positions out of 22 races. And if the suspension is the source of the problem in improving the Ferrari 2022 car, prepare for the possibility that the Marinello team will change the layout of the front suspension of the 675 project the design code for the F1 2023 car. Over time, Marinello has remained anchored to very, perhaps two traditional concepts, and data collected on track indicates that it would be worth changing some concepts, such as the double overlapping triangles, possibly choosing multi-link joints, and possibly switching to the pull rod design, following the courageous path taken by Red Bull and McLaren, with fewer results. It should be noted that the Marinello technicians had already analyzed the feasibility of the front pull rod during the design phase of the ground effect single-seater, so if they decide to change the layout, they will not start from scratch, especially since Marinello was the last to field single-seaters with the front linkage in the four-year period that went from 2012 to 2015, with the F2012, F138, F14T and F15T cars. The fact that Ferrari is studying this option does not necessarily imply that it will pursue it, given the racing department's strong traditionalist wing. The time for making judgments is quite restricted. In addition to these advancements, the prancing horse must deal with other issues. Matteo Bonotto's resignation, which will officially finish his stint at Scuderia Ferrari on December 31st, means that his successor as team principal of the Italian side will be known by that date. In fact, this will most likely coincide not only with the official confirmation of a new team boss on January 1st, but also with a significant rearrangement of posts previously held solely by Matteo Binotto. According to reports in Italian and international press, a clear distinction would be made at least between the team's technical and management functions. This means that a technical director would oversee managing both design departments, chassis and power unit, while their respective managers would remain in place. In short, there would be a significant shift and new approach in comparison to the current hierarchical structure in the Marinello technological region. This new organization structure will obviously have an impact on the Ferrari Formula 1 Challenger development program for the 2023 championship. However, for the time being, rumors emanating from Marinello about the potential of next year's car remain positive, particularly when it comes to the Ferrari engine. Throughout the 2022 Formula 1 season, particularly in the second half, the Italian team has continually focused on modifying the design of some power unit elements, most notably those that were the core causes of Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz's retirements in the first half of the season. The Ferrari power unit department not only analyzed and identified the best solutions for some quality control procedures, but also investigated the best options for improving, primarily the upper area of the internal combustion engine using stress analysis tools, while also addressing the main issue that led to the power unit problems this year. Most notably, Ferrari has been working on a new version of the TJI, that's a turbulent jet injection, an innovation in the air fuel combustion process system. The present TJI system had problems during the beginning phase of the combustion chambers, 
resulting in considerable thermal and mechanical stress that was transferred directly to the neighboring engine parts, such as the turbocharger and the MGUH. According to the reported comments from Haas team principal Gunther Steiner at the recent Bandini Award ceremony in Brizighella, the Ferrari power unit performs like a rocket, with the Ferrari-powered team confident it will be able to capitalize on the entire potential of the 2023 power unit without fear of unexpected technical issues. One of the most intriguing questions in Formula 1 involving the famous Scuderia Ferrari team is related to the aerodynamic philosophy that the new car from Maranello will employ. Based on his comments in recent weeks, the answer came in part from the outgoing Mattia Binotto. The Ferrari 675 will, in theory, follow the guidelines from the 2022 single-seater. On the other hand, considering the budget cap issue, redesigning an automobile from scratch was too expensive. In addition, another essential issue must be considered when evaluating this case. Approaching a fresh concept, possibly like Red Bulls, means starting at a significant disadvantage in comparison to the Milton Keynes team, thanks to the know-how gained during the recently concluded Formula 1 World Championship. Furthermore, according to information gathered by Formula 1 technical analysis, the technicians within the Ferrari racing department strongly believe in the design approach studied for the new regulations. They appear to have finally understood where and how to intervene to correct the F175 Challenger's key issues. Throughout the 2022 Formula 1 season, we learned about the key flaws that have plagued the Italian car – aerodynamics. Although advancements in aerodynamic efficiency, a critical metric in the technological context of current generation wing cars have been made, the levels of the RB18 are still far from being met. In this regard, the additional hours given by the regulation in the wind tunnel, assigned based on final standings positions, will be extremely beneficial for further improving this critical characteristic at specific circuits. The goal remains the same, to clean the flows that encircle the single-seater, reducing drag while keeping the same downforce locations. To put this concept into action, work was done on controlling the turbulence caused around the front tires. Furthermore, Ferrari had deemed it suitable to begin studying concepts linked to so-called flexible wings, a position strongly supported by Red Bull and, to a lesser extent, Mercedes. This concept is important in the overall aerodynamic architecture of the car, providing significant benefits that, in some conditions, broaden the setup window and improve lap times. On a practical level, it is a matter of appropriately crossing the constituents that make up carbon fibers. This simple procedure generates some flexibility in the front wings which tend to descend as air resistance increases in high-speed straights. In slower zones, the wing returns to the predetermined position to create the necessary load. Another critical topic that the Ferrari racing department has focused on is the floor, the area of the car where we'll witness several advancements. According to what has been discovered, the design will have a very precise shift of direction. Adrian Newey led the way in this area for Red Bull, since the RB18 diffuser's highly smooth design minimized the vertical thrust peak. The Maranello engineers thoroughly researched the Red Bull ideology to adapt and implement it on their own car. Let us now discuss the transition between the back and the diffuser, which creates a less angular relationship. This technique avoids a depressive peak, which reduces the infamous and somewhat hazardous aerodynamic hopping to a small nuisance. In addition to this, as previously indicated, the Maranello team will concentrate on reliability a subject that urgently required a solution from the Maranello team, given the major issues during the 2022 Formula 1 Championship. In fact, in the middle of the season, the Italian squad was compelled to weaken and limit the power unit, resulting in significant performance losses. Fortunately, by utilizing the dependability guideline, different interventions on the internal combustion engine will provide a big increase in quality in time for the 2023 Formula 1 World Championship. The triggering cause of engine problems is found in the pre-combustion chamber, which is required to promote fuel evaporation and mixing. This stage releases up to 3% of the fuel. Combustion begins in this section of the engine and continues in the chamber. The highlighted issue is the heat emission peak, which is recorded during the early phase inside the pre-chamber, a situation that should be avoided since it causes high thermal and mechanical stress. As a result, the internal combustion component of the 2023 power unit will reduce this peak to ensure a natural evolution over time. To lower the heat trend, Ferrari engine designers worked on ignition times. To carry out this process, the jet inside the chamber was made more turbulent by intruding on the atomization of the mixture. This method was already established in recent years when Ferrari's technical partner, Marley, delivered the TJI, or Turbulent Jet Ignition System. 
The mechanism has been developed in recent months and is now capable of producing a highly turbulent flow, capable of completely filling the chamber. These factors promote self-ignition in various points of the combustion chamber and, as a result, enhance the thrust on the piston, eradicating the issue that plagued the 2022 Formula 1 campaign. Will they finally return to the top step of the championship next year? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching.